Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're trying to figure out what the hell is up with DC Comics. I think everybody's trying to figure out what the hell's up with DC Comics. Yeah, DC Comics is is seemingly on a collision course uh, at this point. I, I don't know what's going on. A lot of people are leaving DC Comics again. Uh, they've got this new initiative, Future State, where they're basically replacing all of the the uh, main characters. At the same time, they're making deals with uh, Webtoon. Yeah, at the same time they're making deals with Webtoon, at the same time they're getting ready to merge with Discovery. Warner Brothers uh -huh. is merging with Discovery. This feels like a disaster in the making. Like we're watching DC Comics sort of careen off a cliff in, in slow motion. Now, we don't know what the sales are gonna be like or whatever, but there are a lot of things that are happening that uh, I don't think are gonna be good. I'm just understanding it. They saw what happened with Marvel and IEW. Why yeah. the hell would you do the same thing? I don't know. I, I mean, part of it could be that they are more uh, uh, activist-minded now. I well, know. that's what I'm wondering. People left. Did they get replaced with people that are, you know... Well, Mark Wade's coming back. He was he was banned, as I understand it, he was banned from writing for DC Comics, but because a bunch of people jumped ship to Substack... Well, that's what's going to happen. A lot of people who have been you know, ousted for one reason or another are going to get brought back in. So now I mean, that kind of makes it sound like he's relegated to like the B list. Yeah. Well, I think I, I think right now they're going to have to they're going to have to rely on the B list because most of the A listers have left. They mm -hmm. took uh, Substack deals and it's mostly DC Comics people. You know, their their top writers have have left and now uh, we're doing Future State, which is like every main superhero character again getting replaced. It's all about the mantle. Uh, Marvel did this before. It was a freaking disaster. Um, it almost collapsed Marvel well, Comics. Marvel's still doing it. Now they're trying to do it with the movies. Now they're trying to do it with the movies. Yeah. So we're we're gonna talk about that. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not getting a good feeling about this. Uh, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 234,000 subs. Uh, we do talk some about the comic book industry. We've been talking more about the comic book industry in the last month. Yeah, because they're all trying to blow themselves up. Yeah, and a lot of it goes back to, you know, again, Substack. A lot of uh, top DC writers, creators leaving, going to Substack to work on their own creator own so properties. So that sounds like why they're going to Webtoons, is they're trying to find other, you know, maybe possibly quality artists or infiltrate the Korean market. could be that, too. Yeah, I think they're just trying to, to expand their... Because they know, like, oh, manga is what all the kids are reading now. I know, so right? Which we've been telling people. Yeah, but, I mean, you look at uh, you look at some of the decisions they've been making. Future State's basically uh, about replacing all of the, the main characters again. It just came That's out that... Dumb, don't do that. I mean, uh, you can get away with replacing one or two. Yeah. But you can't just replace everyone. It doesn't work. Uh, Aqua Lad is becoming Aquaman. Uh, I have to give a hat tip to Wes from Thinking Critical. I didn't even realize they're replacing Aquaman too, but I should have figured they're replacing everybody. So, um, you know, they're replacing Aquaman. We've got uh, Lucius Fox's son taking over as as Batman now. Okay. Because Bruce Wayne, I guess, is leaving leaving uh, Gotham. Uh, we've got Tim Drake supposedly being bisexual or gay now, and there's no indication in the entire history of this character in the 30 years he's been around. So this is like Iceman. It's like Iceman all over again. Okay. And that yeah. worked out so well, I'm just saying. Yep. Uh, the new Superman uh, is, uh, you know, Jonathan Kent. They're going to age him up, and and he's he's gay. Here's my thing. If you're... Why not just create new characters then? You know, basically you're just hand, doing hand-me-downs and switching them out. That's just... That's kind of insulting. I mean, just make a new character. I don't understand what the big deal is. I mean, I guess they are a new character in a way, but you know what I yeah. mean? It's not the same character, but it's just like, I don't know. We've done this before, though. It's been though. done for years. The, the, we've done this before. You know, even back in the 90s, you know, they had uh, Batman guys back broken. They had Asriel take mm -hmm. over. And it only lasted like a year or two, and then they had uh, Bruce Wayne come back. But now we've got Lucius Fox's kid. I am Batman. At least it's not, I am not Batman. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am Batman, you know. And, and they're not going to do well. And they do this because they'll blame it on misogyny and racism. Yes, that's exactly what's going to happen. That's what they're going to do. It might, it's not, it has nothing to do with that. It's just like you're taking, you know, really, you know, well-known characters and you're changing them. You're, they're still like the mantle, but it's not the character anymore. And people are like, but I already invest all this time in Bruce Wayne. And, well, I don't know who this hell this person is, you know. Yeah. And look, I mean, this, this. 
sort of stunt, I, I guess call it like stunt casting of, of shocking readers being like, everything is changing. It's all new. It's all different. You know, it, it does work initially to boost sales. And then it usually winds up uh, collapsing within I'm just tired of it. A, a short period of time. Again, Marvel did this. They did this with uh, the all new, all different Marvel, Marvel Now. They had a couple, a couple reboots and they tried to make the mantle interchangeable, you know, but the thing is, and we're, we're going to see this, I think with the movies too, the Marvel movies, we're going to see oh, 100%. We know this. Yeah. People go for Tony Stark. They go for Steve Rogers, you know, I mean, it can be done if it's done well, but organically, the thing, that's not just, just yeah. the thing is Marvel DC, these companies don't know how to do it. Well, they don't know how to do it in such a way that it's like, Okay, it's still the same. It's still like you know a hero, but it's gonna play by a different person who just happens to be these things. They will come at you like, did we mention that they're black now? Did we mention that they're gay? Tits, tits, tits. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's like, no, I'm sorry, that sells comics. <laughs> no, they don't get can't have tits. I get that. I keep getting them mixed up. Oh my god, that needs to be a comic too. <laughs> Tits, tits, tits. That's right. I'm just like, I, then I remembered, oh, we're talking, you know, it's, it, what, current year, you know. Current year, tits, tits are bad. Um, tits are bad. Tits actually sell comics, so they try to get rid of that. But yeah, we can't do I'm tits. just like, but the women, okay, it's all women, 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 and, you know, half of them are, you know, lesbians, because that's what they keep doing. Only you know, half? I'm being nice. <laughs> I mean, because the only, you know, if, you, if you, you add those things to it, that makes them super, you know, progressive and look more inclusive. And we're hitting parameters and guidelines and check boxes and, you know, give us money. Yeah. And then what happens is when people reject the, the you know, obvious, you know, ham fisted yeah. uh, uh, ideology in a lot of cases, when people reject it, then they're the problem. The audience is a problem. Then they start blaming the audience. Well, if it wasn't just a bunch of toxic male 50-something-year-old straight white men, they're just horrible people. They don't like our comics where we took all the characters they grew up with and supported all these years and just replaced them all overnight. Yeah, but I mean, you can still replace a couple characters and you do can. it well. Yeah. And you can make them diverse and do it well. But the problem is they're not going to do it well. They're going to do it like they're going to be as obnoxious and, you know, douchey about it as they possibly can be and then just to set it up so that people don't like it so they can scream about it that's exactly what is going to happen we've seen this before like this has happened before they already have a case study this isn't like this first time this has happened marvel tried it before and it failed miserably but meanwhile years before they had diverse characters all the time yes. and no one cared because they were done in a way that was organic and that wasn't like the way they do it now There's the a difference the x-men one of the most diverse superhero teams out there uh for years I, like literally like every kind of person you could think of belonged to the x-men and and uh, it was always one of the best selling titles because it was a good book. And now the X Men is basically just about plants and prom, and people. Don't I know that was care. so weird. And like I said, if they turn around and do this and handle it well, yeah. Um. Okay, but they're already leading with, you know, agendas. They're already yeah. leading with it when they're promoting it, and that's the problem. It's like if you guys just did it, and then the, and then it's oh by the way, it just happens to be this way. People probably wouldn't have cared so much. We we suddenly changed Tim Drake to to be bisexual after 30 years of history in which he showed no interest in sausage. And now he does. And if you get mad about it, you're a bigot. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't you can't argue like where show me 10 years ago in a comic where he leaned this way. Okay, so my next question you know? is, are there characters that have always legit, like been like diverse in some way? They've been like LGBTQ or not white or whatever. Can we just start taking those characters and making them different? No, you cannot. Because I'm like, and then they can't say anything. Because if you would get mad about, like if we took Storm and made her like, I don't know, a redhead. Hey, we'll do that. Made her like a, a, a redhead who was like lighter skinned, you would have a shit fit. People would have a shit fit. And I'm just like, um, because they'd be like, well, she's always been this. How dare you? But you keep doing the same thing the other way. So if you'd be upset about that, you can't be mad if people were upset about the changes you want to make. So I'm waiting for them to be like, yep, Batwoman. Yeah, she likes, she likes sausage too. Yeah, they won't do that. After all this time, after all this time, she's been living with a secret. She actually... Uh, like sausage, right? Yeah, but they that then they'll have a fit. How dare you? How our representation? We 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 love this character. It's been this way for years. Well, Pow. potato, potato. You know, she just can't get enough. I'm just like you know, if if, if if the reverse would piss you off, you can't get mad about other people having opinions that you don't like. You know, 
if the things get changed, they don't want change. I, you know, again, you know, part of this could go back to who's in charge of DC now. That's right. It's hard to figure out who the hell is in charge of it's DC. It's hard to figure out anything that's going on in DC because it's all over the damn place. Everybody's fired or gone or demoted or it whatever. It changes pretty much weekly at this um, point. The person who seems to be steer well, it, it's Jim Lee is kind of there as a figurehead, but the person that seems to be steering the ship is uh, Daniel Cherry the Third, who admits in his Twitter bio that he is an activist. Gosh. I wonder why these changes are happening. <laughs> you no, know, I wonder why. That's probably don't cancel me. Yeah, I don't know. But it's it's like, this is not going to work. This is the opposite of what you need to do. You know, right now, you need to be fighting to, to hold on to every monthly comic book reader you have. You can make a couple changes, but I wouldn't change so much so fast. I just wouldn't. No. I mean, you can get away with a couple things, but I think if you, when you're already hemorrhaging money, you're hemorrhaging readers, mm. you don't know where you're going to end up because now it's, you're getting rolled into Warner and they don't, who knows, people keep joking that they're going to, they're going to get rid of DC. Um, yeah. I mean, th this has been a rumor for a while. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about the possibility of, of DC getting shut down and it seems more likely with this, uh, this merger coming up between Warner and and uh, Discovery because comics just frankly aren't important. Well, this isn't going to sell more. This isn't. This isn't. Or unless unless the window of when they have to show that they're profitable is like right now or like coming up and maybe like the initial like shock value they're hoping is up to boost it to get themselves saved. That could be. I mean, that, that honestly could be because it's all about the quarters and the earnings and, and whatever. And, and Future State, I guess, is... You know, from my understanding, I mean, I haven't, uh, I actually haven't read monthly DC Comics in a couple of years now because I, I was disinterested in everything that was going on. I did pick up the um, uh, the Walmart books, the five dollar Walmart mm -hmm. books, which I thought was, I thought was a really good idea, and it just never, it never took off. Um, question though, this future state is it, is it like in conjunction with the regular books, or is it replacing? Replacing, the and then they're gonna do another re, re reboot. Oh, I guess. No, no, that's stupid. That's uh, yeah, just not is, smart. They're basically just shocking readers. I mean, what they need to do, like, look, if I were in charge, I'm not in charge. If I were in charge of Marvel and or DC, I would be like, we have a 10-year plan. Yes, we need to keep the stories fresh. We need to constantly keep the churn of readers. So we have a 10-year plan. Beginning, middle, end to this universe in 10 years. We try to get a creative team on the book or the different books that's going to stick it out for 10 years. And then at the end, we'll have an event and we'll, we'll reset the clock again. But you have a 10-year window of consistent stories, consistent characters. This is the way the universe works. And then we just hit the reset button. And you could even change a couple, you know, yeah. to, to appease whatever mandates there are. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know about comics, to you know, mainstream comics, to, to say what I would do. But I just, it doesn't seem, given what happened before... This doesn't seem like the smartest move. The only thing I can think of is they're doing it for shock value to try to boost the sales temporarily to, to you know, save their asses. Yeah, because, you know, this is very weird. Right before the Substack deals were announced, Jim Lee went out there and said that, you know, hey, uh, you know, Warner Media, they love us. Um, yeah, I remember this. You know, Jason Kawar loves us. Well, Jason Kawar is getting gone. You know, he's going to be gone. <laughs> Sorry. He's, he's not going to save your asses. I think once this merger happens, I think it's very plausible. They're already... Why is everybody else jumping ship? They know that something's coming. That's why they're yeah. going and they're jumping ship. You know, rats always leave the ship when it's sinking. Let's talk about that. Yeah, it's better to leave in a situation like this, coming from a corporate background, I can tell you, you're better off leaving on your own than waiting to get laid off or fired. Uh, you're better off leaving on your own because it looks better on your resume. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I... I left for greener pastures. Before it went down. Before it went down. And so many people got laid off. Uh, Bleeding Cool a couple days ago. Uh, DC Comics is having more staff changes. You know, talking about the bloodbaths of 2020, there were two uh, mass, mass layoffs. Mm -hmm. People that have been there for decades got gone. Um, now the staff phone list is unrecognizable. Uh, past week or so, they've learned that Katie Kubert, granddaughter of Joe Kubert, was promoted from editor to senior editor. Wow. That's a, that's a leap. And team leader in charge of Global Publishing Innovation Group at DC. Her new role at the publisher will include digital media, audio, global, and DC horror. Uh, DC editor Maggie Howell also left DC Comics. Former editor Andy Corey stating she was the heart and soul of our black label group under Mark Doyle. So she's gone. Uh, Blink Cool understands she is moving to an editorial role IDW. Oh my God, don't! <laughs> Mark Doyle was recently appointed as their editorial director. Don't go to <laughs> IDW! <laughs> IDW has been more shaped than DC Comics. Why the hell would anybody willingly 
go to work for IDW at this point. I just did a video two days ago. They're shutting down their tabletop games division. Their tabletop games were actually profitable. Their Kickstarters for like their Ninja Turtle games and stuff were getting like a million and a half. And they were selling games at retail like crazy. And they shut that down. That was like one of the few bright spots they had. It's like people don't know where to go because everything is changing in comics mm -hmm. so quickly in the mainstream. They don't know where to go. Um, Bling Cool also understands that uh, associate editor uh, D. Lopez, final week at DC Comics, uh, moving to a new position. Uh, Lopez interned at Dark Horse in 2015 before what? becoming an editorial Where is he temp. moving to? Does it say? Just, No. Uh, uh, Dan Mirren has also left DC, DC Comics Vice President, publishing operations from 2019 to 2020. He boasts of achieving a 99% in stock rate across 2,500 active products. Blah, yada, blah, yada, blah, yada. Blah, blah, blah. Who cares? They're all leaving. They're all leaving. What's this tell you? What does this tell you? DC Comics is going to freaking blow itself up and you can't even really tell what the sales numbers are, you have to kind of guess because they're not using Diamond exclusively. So now you have to kind of cobble together the numbers from all the other distributors. And that that whole thing feels like they it, were desperate. To me, the whole thing feels like, you know, a shell game. Like if we can just, you, you never, no one's going to ever know that, yeah. how many sales we actually had. We and can I, say it's whatever. I, I think um, last time I checked, uh, Warner's actually selling off more. I mean, we know they sold off Crunchyroll. Mm -hmm. uh, we've heard, uh, you know, rumors that they would probably sell off or shut down Rooster Teeth. And that that's that's circulating again. Well, I don't think they're going to sell DC because they want to use it for films. Yeah. for th yeah. It's like Marvel would have Marvel Studios and Marvel Comics. It's I think that's what's going to happen here. Well, what's interesting, though, is that the DC films are all over the place financially. Mm -hmm. um, now, Suicide Squad did not do well at all at the box office. Disclaimer, I started watching it last night. And it's actually really fucking good. It's really good. I, I'm shot. I'm like, oh my God, this one's actually good. But it had the, the stink of previous films mm -hmm. on it. Because but you can just say most of their films aren't doing well because they have the stink of previous films on it. Yeah, and I felt the same way. I actually like Shazam. I thought Shazam was was pretty good, but people were so soured on some of it because DC has been like it's been all over the damn place. It's been all over the place. I mean, let's be honest. Up and down. And Even Wonder Woman. They had the first Wonder Woman movie, and it was like the bright spot. It was like better than all the other movies. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then they ruined it with the second one. Yeah. And then they have Patty Jenkins out there going on about, oh, it was because HBO. No. It was just, it the was not a good movie. Was it just wasn't. It was a shit movie. And then you had like other things that did better, and then you had the Snyder Cut, and they're not doing that anymore, so that kind of just goes up and down. It's just like they're all over the damn place. Yeah, what what kills me about the Snyder Cut was I didn't like the theatrical Justice League. I thought it was a confusing it was, mess. It, it really was. I didn't like it either. I thought it was boring. I thought it was jokey in places it didn't need to be jokey. And then I saw the Snyder Cut, and I'm like... It made sense. Yeah, it, regardless of what you think of Zack Snyder, what you think of Zack Snyder's take on the characters, whatever. The movie was actually coherent. I understood what the mm -hmm. hell was going on. I'm like, if, if you had done this theatrically, we might be talking a whole different ball game. But right now, it's just like, yeah, they keep doing individual films, and it's really hit or miss how they do. And some of them actually, like I said, The Suicide Squad is actually really well, good. Aquaman was good, but now we don't know what's going to happen with the next one because people are going to they're threatening to boycott it because of Amber Heard. Um, and everything else. So I, I, who the hell knows? It is literally all over the place. Let's just start taking place and bets on it now. It's, it's so unpredictable. Uh, so they're going to look at that and be like, well, you know, you can't really, you know, I think if their movies were doing better, they might be like, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give comics, we'll give comics a chance for another five, five ten years. I, I don't know. Literally do not know what's going to happen to DC Comics. Again, lots of rumors that they were going to, you know, outsource the comics um, whatever's going on, it is much more dire over there than at Marvel. As problematic as Marvel is right now, as many problems as Marvel has, they don't have nearly the problems that DC has. I mean, you've got people leaving, people getting laid off, books getting canceled. They're, they're, again, the whole line is changing uh, probably for diversity and inclusion sake. And you've also got, you know, a good majority of their top shelf talent leaving, just jumping shit. Uh -huh. Everybody who can jump ship from DC is jumping ship. And then these, these both Marvel and DC have the problem with their their talent that they did have, um, like you know alienating fans and being rude to people for no yeah. reason, or yeah. just blocking people even though they didn't do anything to them, and they and then they lost sales that way. I mean, I can I've, I've never seen companies want to fail so bad in my life. 
it's like, like they didn't want Elizabeth. Like, are they trying to be write-offs? Like that's all I can think of. Like they're trying to use like the comics segments of these companies as like loss leaders so they could get tax breaks. I mean, I don't understand why else you'd want to lose money so badly. I don't know because it's really it's really not hard to at least retain your current audience. Now I understand you want to grow your your user base outside of the the core demographic, but I'm like you have to do both. You got to keep your core audience happy while also putting some new product out there till it builds up till it builds up you know and marvel used to be good at this they, they had their core team at x-men spider-man whatever and then they would try some new stuff you know uh too to try to bring in some new readers yeah, it's but... never a good thing to just completely be like hey, we're throwing it out the window it's all new now i mean that's never smart it's just not it's, it feels desperate yeah it feels desperate it feels like this is the hail mary pass they're gonna try one more time one more ch- time to try to you know show Warner discovery that comic books are still worth it. And I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to go well, but who the hell knows? Who knows anymore? Nobody knows what's going to happen. Like nobody saw the Substack thing that came out of left field. You know, it's crazy, crazy. We got to wrap it up. Yep. All right, guys. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later. Bye.